I, I just think that Brandon Staley is probably sort of a victim of his own, uh, like, like a victim of his own approach that has changed since he, you know, in, in you know, second, third year, et cetera, et cetera. You know what I'm saying? Or second year, I guess. That's only two years of Brandon Staley. Well, I, and we talked about that earlier in the season, just how he got so criticized during the off season. And it wasn't even that his strategies didn't work last year. It's that in the most high profile game, the game against the Raiders on Sunday night, the final game of the season, they all blew up in his face. And so he went from, uh, you know, hey, my strategy works to kind of sheepishly going to the off season and getting shamed out of being uh, crazy Brandon Staley that goes with analytics all the time and goes for it on fourth down. So I was... I wasn't surprised that Doug Peterson declined it because, again, it was all about the clock. You need as much time as possible, and if you give them that penalty, then it's back to third down. Maybe they run 40 more seconds off, and those are more precious. And so I think Peterson assumed he would try the field goal, and so uh, you know Doug Peterson outcoached him. In the second half. In the second half. Yeah. Well, I mean, maybe in the first half, but we don't know because Trevor Lawrence. Because Trevor Lawrence thought he was uh, I mean, Corporal Jones. I mean, I think you have to like, like obviously, it's on Trevor Lawrence. He looked lost up there. He didn't He didn't seem comfortable at all in the moment. It looked a lot like Trevor Lawrence in week 18. You know, he certainly didn't appear as if he'd, uh, you know, learned or like learned to play on that. And, and he's played on big stages, of course. But like, you know, that NFL stage uh, after that week 18 game against the, um, you know, against the Titans. And some of that's on Doug Peterson, I think. You know, that's that's coaching to a degree. But he came out, man. You heard him say it to uh, Kaylee Hartog going into the tunnel. She's like, you know, what are you going to do? He's like, we might do a little more up-tempo. And, I mean, yeah, I, I think I pointed out in the you know the chat. It's like, that's maybe we need to hammer this over in the second half. And sure enough, um, there were a bunch of points scored in the second half. What um, what percentage chance does Brady Steele get fired? Frank, you can go first because I'm jaded by my love of that man. I put it at 55%. And I look, we talked about Let me say quickly, though. Sorry to interrupt, Rich. Mike Florio said before the game, there's a 50-50 chance that Sean Payton comes back. Now, this the percentages may obviously change after he watched what we all watched, too. Well, let me also say that uh, Mike Florio maybe listened to Megan Payton's podcast. Uh, that's Sean Payton's daughter. And he was on it. And he literally said there's a 50. He said, I might go mm. back to Fox. I might coach. So, like, I don't know if. Yeah, so you don't need to, you know, you have to use your sources when you listen to the right podcast. Uh, well, gotcha. well, I think, too, it's like interesting to note that Sean Payton has aggressively, you know, flirted with the Cardinals and flirted with the Broncos. But, you know, he knows what he's doing. He's, and, and you mentioned, you know, maybe I'll go back to coach, maybe I'll go back to broadcast. Like, he's, he's trying to make himself value, like, you know. That but was, that 50 50, it felt like it was going up 5% every time Jacksonville scored a touchdown. Where it's at, it's at yeah. 100% then. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, it, you know, because now the Chargers is a realistic chance that job could come open because you, I think before this week started, we kind of all thought, hey, if Jacksonville blows out the Chargers, that seemed like a route where Brandon Staley possibly gets fired. And you thinking probably it's not going to happen if it's a close game, almost no chance. It was but then close. You don't factor, yeah, you don't factor them blowing uh, the third largest lead in NFL playoff history. And so I think. What'd you uh, put the number at? I, 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 I think it's 75. 60. I, yeah. It's, it's All right. Let me, let me ask you, let me ask you two things that may move your, your number. Number well, one. Anyway, I, just want to, I want to point out Pete, Pete Prisco just texted and said that Brandon Staley's press conference is a guy who knows what's coming. Apparently. Obviously we're not so watching. Albert Breer reported last week that, um, Sean Payton may want to bring his own guys. That includes Jeff Ireland and, and, and Ryan Pace. Yep. And also, you have to pay a first-round pick was the report from maybe Nick Underhill. I Our Chargers' first-round pick would be, I think, perfectly reasonable. Well, I mean, you have a lot of holes you need to fix or, you know, have some holes you need to fix. I mean, but you're looking at the 20th overall pick. You're talking, about, you're talking about like a mid, like that's not, it's not, we're not having a discussion about a top 10 pick. But my point is that what is, does that affect your percentage at all? Or are you sticking with 60 and 75? I'll say 75. Let me ask you this. I'm going to run through some coaches real quick. And um, you stop me when we get to somebody you, I mean, well, okay. Bill Belichick or Sean Payton starting like next year. No, I mean, that's a short, it's a short list. I mean, you can save your breath, but I, I mean, I, I get all that, but you're giving up a lot and, I mean, I get it. Like, I, it's hard to defend. Are you the Cardinals giving up like number like five or something or number nine, number three. I mean, maybe they give up a twenty twenty four pick. I'm not sure what the like the, the math is on that, but I I don't know. Maybe Sean Payton's worth it, but I I mean, Breach went through his his year to year stats. I think on on a recent podcast, it wasn't like he won twelve games every year. He had like two or three seven and nine back to back. Three straight years of seven and nine. Yeah, before the two thousand and. Uh... 
17 draft when they got all those guys, Kamara, Ramchek, Marcus Williams, uh, Mar- Marshawn Lattimore. And that, that changed everything. And Jeff Ireland was a big heat. Jeff Ireland came in before that draft, I believe. Big part of that draft. So the, the, to, look, the two things for me with, with Sean Payton and the Los Angeles Chargers are, one, will he come off the reported price of $20 million per year that he wants? Because I don't think the Chargers will fire Brandon Staley and pay him and also pay – Sean Payton, $20 million a year. That's just too much. You're also firing Tom Telesco, who's got a lengthy contract, potentially. Um, and then I think Telesco is the other factor, is if Sean Payton comes, will he be willing to work with Tom Telesco, who is very much liked by the Spanish family, or will they decide to just part ways and say, Sean, do what you want? Now, I mean, I tend to think that as aggressive as it is, like if, I get a, if, I'm, if I'm the Chargers and I get a chance to pair Sean Payton with Justin Herbert, I'm doing what I need to do to make it happen. Because Justin Herbert has been incredible three years into his career in the NFL, but he has not been fully unlocked by a guy, an offensive mind like a Sean Payton, who could really do some special stuff, um, you know, if he gets a hold of I mean, like, Sean Payton and Herbert would smash, man. Yeah, it does feel like that would be a good fit, and it does feel like that's – feels like when Payton says there's a 50-50 chance, it's just because he was biding his time to one of the jobs he quote-unquote wants – uh, comes open and that absolutely could happen. So that is. Well, let's let's also add to the the Brandon Staley thing. Like the Mike Williams Week 18 stuff is not going to help his case either. I mean, he just didn't need to play his starters. Mike Williams get hurt. Can't play tonight. If Mike Williams plays tonight, the Chargers probably win the game. Yeah, I mean, you have Justin Herbert losing I one mean, of his favorite receivers. They were up twenty-seven nothing. I don't think they needed Mike Williams to not lose that. Well, game. but I'm just saying, like, it's like the back-to-back weeks you lose your number two wide receiver who just got a huge contract in the offseason, straight into blowing a twenty-seven point lead in a in a road wild card game where you were gifted. No, it's it. not great. It's not. It's not a great run. Right. And how many times have you seen a team put up thirty points and not even put up, barely put up three hundred total yards? You know, I just saw it in this game right here. Right, and so they're up 27 nothing, not because their offense was uh, going up and down the field. It's because Trevor wanted to do four interceptions. So there's something to be said for that, that their offense looked bad for almost this entire game. They got a muffed punt that put them inside the 10, and they couldn't even score a touchdown. The, the but isn't that more of a reflection of the offensive coordinator that people have been winching about? Well, I think it's partial reflection that you didn't have Mike Williams because your coach put, played him in a meaningless game. And so I think yeah, but over the course of the season, the conversation was that the, the play calling was dog doo-doo, right? Well, right. <laughs> but but you have more options if you're the offense coordinator, if Mike Williams is out there. And if you're the offensive coordinator, it's not your fault that Mike Williams is not playing. Well, it also, too, like, let's not forget. And look, they didn't have the, they didn't have the totality of their weapons for much of the season. But when you, you know, if you're saying, and I don't disagree with you, Wilson, like Joe Lombardi didn't do a great job calling plays especially when they didn't have Mike Williams because they just check it down most of the time. But you're, you're, the argument you're making is like coaching is the problem for Justin Herbert, which is to me an immediate, if you can get Sean Payton, then you go for it. Um, no, I get it. Like in a vacuum, absolutely. I'm just, again, part of the reason is I'm, I like Brandon Staley. The other part of the reason is the 20 million per year. I looked it up and no one seems to know, but the, the guess on the gossip sites is between four and five million a year. So Brandon Staley makes, who knows what he actually makes. And then of course, are, are you going to have to restart with the front office? which means a whole new coaching staff and, and all that comes with it. I don't know. It's expensive. It's really expensive. No, I think it's actually, it could be not necessarily a setback, but it, next year might be, you know, a, a wash and that they might win eight or nine games. And then. I don't know, man. I mean, it, look, that's totally possible in that division. If you give, to me, if you give Sean Baton, you know, Rashawn Slater at left tackle, Justin Herbert, Mike Williams, Keenan Allen, you know, Gerald Everett had a really good run there. Austin Eckler, like that team is going to, I mean, I, the defense has enough pieces where it's not going to be those early Saints teams that couldn't stop anybody. Let um, me ask you this quickly. Would you rather have all the things that you two guys want in terms of a, of a rebuild starring Sean Payton and what all that cost? Or would you rather just have Frank Reich be the OC? Mm, I mean, well, I, I can sort of go back to your point about the Cardinals, which is like just rip the Band-Aid and just get get the best possible option. Yeah, but the, the Cardinals won four football games. <laughs> right. I mean, I, like, Frank Reich would be interesting with Justin Herbert. For sure. I don't hate that idea. And Frank Reich's been the OC in, in, with the Chargers before. Um, 